prayer. So, Father God, we commit ourselves to you tonight. We want to go deep into prosperity. We want to learn from your feet. We don't want to deceive ourselves. We just want to hear the truth so that we can gain from it. Help us to gain it in Jesus' name. Grant us a listening here and a being heart. In Jesus' marvelous name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight, we are continuing what God was telling us yesterday. And tonight, he wants to start from Jesus himself. We want to look at how Jesus, what he said, what he did, how he reacted, and how does it translate to us to have a prosperity. First, I want to start here by explaining to us that um, there is an everlasting prosperity and there is a temporary prosperity. There is a prosperity that outlives your earthly life and there is a prosperity that terminates here. So, um, there is one that is everlasting prosperity and there is a temporary prosperity. Now, temporary prosperity, it might stay with you till the day you die. It might stay with you for three years. It might stay with you for 15 years. But after that, you are definitely going to lose it. And once you lose it, you have had it and you have lost it and that is all. The everlasting um, prosperity transcends your lifetime. So not only will you be rich here, by the time you are dying, and getting out of your body, you are entering into the second prosperity, which now has no end. It is forever. It has no, there is no pause. So, uh, there are two kinds of prosperity, and I, I got, we needed to clarify this immediately. And that was why, when Jesus came to us, and he started his ministry, you will discover that in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, after Satan has tempted Jesus, and uh, you know, he has been baptized and everything, the first thing that Jesus started preaching was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So naturally, when Jesus is speaking to us, when Jesus is teaching us, when Jesus is doing everything, he has the kingdom of heaven at the back of his mind. It is the major important thing for him. That was the first thing he spoke about when he started preaching, and that's the last thing he spoke about. So, it's just about the kingdom of God. That was so key to him. So, when, whenever Jesus was talking about prosperity, he was talking about prosperity that transcends your life here. So, that you will not lack when you are on earth, and you will not lack when you die. Are you understanding? So, when, whereas in the Old Testament, the only thing they were talking about, all the forms of teachings that they had, all the forms of information they had, was about, if I have money here, and I die here, that is all. That is even when you look at the way Paul, uh, uh, David was writing in his, in his Psalms, the way Solomon was acting in his life, the way all of them were behaving, they behave for now. Because they have no clue what is after. They have no clue what will happen after they die. So they see that once I close my eyes now, I close my eyes in death. So they will say something like, it is only the living that can praise you. It is a word that came out of lack of information about what happens when you die. And that's why uh, I think uh, so, so if, last, last month or so I was telling my wife that this song that we used to sing in Nigeria... Uh, so those of us that are Nigerians, uh, Yoruba Nigerians, we know the song. It says, Allah no man in your Baba. That is, it's only the living that can praise you. The person that is dead cannot praise you. That is Old Testament thinking. <laughs> because those that really praise God very well, who, has, who does not even have time to watch TV, to drive, to bath, to you know, to discuss to people, they just have 24 hours to praise God. It's actually those that have died and have gone to heaven. So when Jesus talks about prosperity, or when he's talking about anything, he's looking at after you die. So it's beyond now. 
it passes now it goes beyond just the earth it goes after you are dead uh, you have died what will you have so when jesus talks about prosperity it's not just about now it's not just a temporary prosperity it's an everlasting prosperity that jesus is planning to give to his own praise the lord i hope we understand that side now let's go further now now when jesus is now talking about prosperity we look at the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse, uh, 6 verse 19 rather. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. Matthew 6 19. Jesus said, lay not, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rot doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rot doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, that that will your heart be also now when jesus was talking about prosperity so jesus is not saying here that those that serve him will suffer lack so they will not have treasures <laughs> so i want us to pick it from that verse already that jesus was already telling us that those that follow him they will definitely have access to treasures because you don't talk to people who will never have treasures and say lay up your treasures not on earth why will you tell us not to lay it if you will not give us? So Christ is already saying here that it is natural for anyone that follows Christ to have access to treasures. It is natural. If you read where Jesus was telling us about, think not about tomorrow, why? Because I will provide for you everything you need every day. Everything you will need every day, I will provide it for you. Um, somewhere in the book of um, Genesis, I think Genesis chapter 2, yes, Genesis chapter 2, um, if you, no, sorry, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, after verse 26 downward, after God said, let's get man in our image and everything, and, uh, or is this chapter 2, I'm, I'm getting it mixed up now, God was saying that for everything he has created, he has prepared what is going to eat. For everything he has created, he has prepared what they are going to eat has been settled. So naturally, it is God is going to take care of his own. It is his duty to take care of his own. So Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 6 that don't lay for yourself treasures on earth. So the first thing I want us to note very clearly there is that everyone that follows Jesus, that forsake all and follow Jesus, will definitely have access to treasures. And that is why I find it funny when we spend the whole of our time teaching people how to prosper. It is not your duty. It is natural that as a child of God, you will have access to treasures. So you are, is, our job is not to be teaching you about, ah, you will be prosperous. No, no, it's not our job. Our job is to teach you how to please this God and naturally you will have access to the treasures. So let's go further. So if the first thing that Jesus said here is that lay not your treasures on earth. What is he saying? He's saying that your works and everything that will be provided for you on earth determines what you will have after you die. Jesus is not coming from this earth alone. Jesus has been in heaven. He has seen how it works. He has seen what is available over there. He knows what the reward is. He understands perfectly what the reward is. So, he is here telling us that I know that place. You could have many things here and be empty there. You could gain many things on earth and have nothing over there. And the kind of prosperity I'm teaching you is not the prosperity of the earth alone. I am looking at after you die. So, after you die is more important than your living on earth. So, the treasures I will bring your way, I am not planning you to lay it up for yourself here. What I am asking you to do is to send it over there. Because there is a life after you die. So, some will naturally have prosperity on earth. They will have everything they have. Naturally, God will pass treasures to pass their way. But they will eat it all here. 
And by the time they die, they discover that they had nothing. And that was what Jesus was trying to pass across to us in the story of the rich man and the Lazarus. Rich man had his hair and he enjoyed his hair. He had his hair and he enjoyed it very well here. But the Lazarus did not even have access to his hair. So what he should have gotten here has been sent over across to him. So by the time they both die, the rich man have nothing to lay hold in heaven. He didn't even have one soil. He didn't even have the permission to step on one ground. If he, was in, if he was homeless in heaven, it would have even been good. He had no opportunity of entering there at all. So he was in poverty, impoverished in hell. Why did poor man Lazarus, who had had this thing sent up, uh, 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 in front of him, he was now resting somewhere good. It was okay. So that's what Jesus was sent. It's part of the message Jesus was sent to pass across to us that there is a life after here and there is a reward and you can build something for yourself over there with what you have now. But then when you get to heaven, there is no working. There is no reward for works you do in heaven. There is no service in heaven. There is absolutely no money in heaven. They, they will not, there is nothing you will do in heaven. They will say, ah, see what you did in heaven. Let us now go and build you a house. It's not possible. Heaven is eternity. It's called eternity. As you enter, so you shall be forever. So if all you enter heaven with is a block, or till you, of course there is no death. Sorry, there is no death. I want to say till you die. <laughs> Till forever and ever and ever and ever, it is that block that will be your property. If you enter heaven with a partially completed building, you will live there forever till eternity. That is what you will have. Now, if you enter heaven with a mansion, that is, it, it does not increase and it does not reduce. So you don't plan to enter heaven with one block and say, I want to now get there. I will now work hard. They will now give me a mansion. It is not possible. So that Jesus was immediately warning us that I am going to pass treasures your way. But you have to ensure that you send it across to the other side. You have to ensure you send it far to the other side. So that when you die, you will now be prosperous in the place that is most important. Why? Because there is no prosperity you have on earth that you will not leave behind. If you have it the day you die, immediately you come out of your body, you are separated from it. Your car is no longer yours. Your room that you have the key and nobody has access to enter your room and nobody dared enter your house. People will enter. Your television that you have said that nobody should carry down, they should hang it and it should always be clean. The one you are always shouting on people, I want that thing clean, will be dirty and you won't be able to do anything about it. People will pick up your car and be driving it up and down. If they bash it, you don't know. So there is nothing you gain here that will last forever. You will leave it. So you have a choice. Have it here in excess. And when you die, you are empty. Or try as much as possible to empty yourself while you are here. And people are looking at you and say, I thought that woman is working in a good place. Why is she like that? I thought that man should be able to afford the latest Range Rover. Why is he driving a simple car? I expect him to have had houses, one in Dubai, one in America, one in UK, one in Village, one in Lagos, another one in Abuja. Why is he sticking to one? They don't know that you are sending it away into the future because you know you are going somewhere. That was the wisdom that the whole people, the, 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 the Christians of old had that it is lost today. 
That's the teaching they got that we no longer hear today. So what we hear today is to chop as much as we can chop here because we say God has blessed us. We forget that Jesus himself said, send it over there because that is where your main prosperity is. The maximum best among God will live 150 years. Even at 150 years, you'll be begging to die. My grandma died at the age of about 120 something. And I, for about 20 years, she was already begging to die. Because the people she, that were born, when she gave back to my own parents, were now uh, the only people she can talk to. Uh, the closest person to her, I think she is 40 years older than that person, or 50 years. All her friends and maids have died. She was tired of this earth. She wanted to die. Sometimes she would stop breathing herself, then she would wake up again. That, so that's how bad this life is. Now, whatever you have for that 120 years and you, are, and you have eaten it, it is gone. I mean, you go to a restaurant, you buy the best of foods in that restaurant. Immediately you cut the spoon, uh, you cut the food and start eating it in your mouth. That moment is the only time you have the taste in your mouth. Immediately it enters your stomach, the taste is gone. The next thing that will happen to that food is you are going to go to the toilet and it's going to come out as a foul smell. I have even noticed that the sweeter the food, the more bad the smell when you go to the toilet. <laughs> and that is gone. Another person takes that money and sends it across. He did not eat such a marvelous expensive meal. He ate a simple meal, but he has sent it across and is waiting for him there. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus told us that we should not keep our treasures here, we should keep it uh, uh, in heaven. So, it means that treasures will definitely come your way. So, I am not teaching this evening to try to ginger you that Christ wants to prosper you. It is your meat, it is your food. As a child of God, provisions will come your way. It is natural. The only time provisions will not come your way is two ways. Number one, if you did not trust God for it, you will not get it. Two, if Christ does not want you to have it, you will not get it. If you do not trust God enough for it, and you are walking by sight and not by faith, you will not get the provision of God. And if Christ says, I am not giving you, you will not get it. But a lot of us can now leave Christ and go and get it. That's what is happening majority now. People leave Christ to go and get it. And they get it. But if you are waiting for Christ, it's either you do not have faith, so you didn't get it, or he does not want you to have it, so you are not getting it. So let's go further. Ah, God will help us. God will help us. God will help us to cover as much as possible. Now let's quickly go to uh, Matthew chapter 25. Verse 20 to 23. Matthew chapter 25, verse 20 to 23. Now, I will not read it because of our time. Our time is going very fast. I will just paraphrase about it. It's about the, the parable of the talents. Jesus Christ was telling us about a master that was a no-nonsense master, was a tough master, very tough master. And, he, you know, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto. So, when he says, the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto, he's talking about heaven. And when Jesus himself is talking about the master, is a no-nonsense master. Who is he talking about? Himself and his father, who are one. Now, they gave five talents to one. They gave three talents to the other. And gave one talent to the third. And when the master came, they traded with the talent. Honestly, the time God opened my eyes to read this verse very well, I began to ask questions. What I expected the master to do is to come back and ask the guy who made um, five more to pay the tithe for the five more and the balance is his own. I expect the master to tell the guy who had three talents and got three more, simply pay your tithe, give me a generous offering, and the rest is your own. And probably the one who had one, it would have been easy for him to go and get one and get extra one and also pay tithe 
pay a generous offering, and the rest is his own. But I am noting here that Jesus Christ was saying that the whole five I gave you, plus the five you made extra, everything is my own. And that was why the, the young one said, ah, 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 why do you like to reap where you did not sow? You are a tough master. You are wicked. Ah, you wouldn't even allow me to, you, everything is now your own. It, it is me who worked for it. I went, I, it is me that is supposed to work for it, go around, work hard, get it. And, but the master says, no, I give you five, you trade with the five, you get five, the five belongs to me. Because in the first place, who gave you the first five? The three I gave you belongs to me. The three extra came because I gave you three. So you are not getting, going to give me 10% and say that is my property. Or and give me a generous offering that you decide in your heart. No, I am the owner of everything. Now you enter into my own house and let me spoil you. Beyond what your talent can give you. Praise the Lord. And God, we are going somewhere here. The Holy Spirit is taking us somewhere here. I want you to note that we, many of us in this generation, have become like the third man. And what we are doing is that we are, we are trying to cover the barest minimum that we can get to God. Because Jesus actually told them that, why don't you put my money into usury? And I will get at least interest, something from it. So what we are doing is we are at least getting an interest for God by deciding in our hearts that, okay, what we are going to be doing for God is that we are the owner of everything He has given us. We only give Him 10%. So that we can keep the law that we are no more under. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what Christ is saying is that the life you have to make that money, who gave it to you? Could, could you keep yourself alive? The next minute, can you control it? Those that died today, the 150,000 persons that have died in the last 24 hours, could, do they have the authority? If they had the power, wouldn't they still be alive now? Why are they dead? Because their time is up. So for everything you make with this life, as long as you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you are no longer the owner of that life. Everything you own in that life came from Jesus. If Jesus had not saved you, then you will not have eternal life. You will not even have access to the other place. So everything you own today belongs to Christ. If he has given you five talents, whatever you make with the five talents, 100% is the property of Jesus. If he has given you three talents, whatever you make with the three talents, 100% belongs to Jesus. 100%. Now, he is not a wicked, devilish father who will collect it all from you and not give you back. So how do you give it to God? It is simply to go to Him. Once you have it, your profit, your money, and say, I have brought your property to you. I surrender all. This is my salary. I just hand it. I'm not going to take 10% and give you the owner. And me, who is a borrower, I'm taking 90%. It doesn't work that way. Who gave you the life? Who owns it? If you have given your life to Jesus Christ, then all your life and everything your life will ever come out and whatever your life will ever amount to belong to Him. He owns the hundred percent. He does not own ten percent. He is not a shareholder. You are not in a in a business with God where you are the majority shareholder and Jesus is the minority shareholder who takes ten and you take ninety. It doesn't work that way. How it works? Is that he owns all. You give him all. But you know God, Jesus does not spend money, you know. He won't come down and say, okay, let us share your food. <laughs> let us eat out of your uh, stuff. 
It's not, so he will now tell you, okay, now that you have given it to me, let me now feed you. Let me now clothe you. He will not be the one telling you, this is what we are buying with this money. This is what we are doing with this money. This is where we are going with this money. The reason why many of us are not willing to go that route is that you know that sometimes God might decide that it is 50% he wants you to dash out. And you are afraid because you are ah, my money, my money, my money. That's why we are afraid. Praise the Lord. So, um, Jesus is speaking here in his parable that when I give you anything, I am the owner of it all. But it is my duty to now take care of you. Please note, the man with the five talent doesn't have to feed himself with the five talent. The five talent cannot even feed him. <laughs> the master said, enter into my joy. Enter into my prosperity. Enter into my fullness. I will feed you. I will take care of you. I will set to you. I will... I will Everything you ever need, it is me that will give it to you. It is not my job. Even the one that has 3%, it was God that said, because you have done well, you brought back all you made with it. You traded with it and I am the owner of everything. I am pleased by what you have done. Enter into my fullness. Now, a person that is in Christ's fullness is a very prosperous person. And because Christ is the one helping you to manage your finances, it will help you to ensure that your treasures are not stored on earth. It will not only provide for you on earth, it will guide you to push your treasures over there because he knows he has gone to prepare a place for you. Do you know that um, when Jesus was telling us the, the parables of the rich man and Lazarus, he was not talking to Gentiles. He was talking to the Jews. Because that's where his ministry, his ministry was just around the Jews. So he was talking to people. And you know, when you are talking to people, there is a cultural background in the story. So naturally, the, the rich man that Jesus was talking about is a man, is a Jew. And all Jews pay tithes. They are all tithers. They are, they are effective titers. And this is, so the rich man there must have been paying tight. But it was not enough for God to move him from where he was to heaven. Jesus never, never said he was a, a committed sin. He, the only thing he did was that we know very well was he did not, he, 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 he stored his pressure on her. There was a gate for his treasure in heaven sitting at his gate. The gateway for him to have treasures in heaven so that he can buy himself a place in heaven was sitting at his gate. That was where he was supposed to channel some of his riches. But he kept it all to himself. And he must have just been fulfilling the righteousness. This is what the Lord said. I have fulfilled it. I am okay. This is what the Lord says. And Jesus said that, that was not enough. <laughs> That's not enough. And you will note that Jesus spoke about um, Abraham's bosom because at that time paradise has not been prepared for us now he has gone to prepare a place he said I go to prepare a place for you so that where I go you will come also and when he prepares that place for us he is preparing a house he is building treasures he is building things for us over there some will cross over there there will be massive men here celebrated where people will hail them but by the time they get over there, they absolutely have nothing. So the kind of prosperity that Jesus is talking about is not just a temporary prosperity. It's a prosperity that transcends time. That we enter, we follow you into eternity. Now let's go further. Let's go further. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, Jesus said, Be ye perfect, even as your father which is in heaven, is perfect. So when Jesus was telling us all the parables, especially we were looking at the parables of the talent, he was talking about a perfect situation. Because he wants a perfect child. He wants us to be perfected along with him. So how does perfection come in? Now let's go to Matthew chapter 9 verse 17. Let's see perfection in finances. 
perfection in finances. Let's see it. Matthew chapter 19 verse 17 down to 23. I will not read it because of our time. I will just quickly paraphrase it. It is about, it's about a, a rich young ruler who came to meet Jesus and said, Good master. And Jesus answered him, Stop calling me good. It's only the Father that is in heaven that is good. And he said, Okay, what do I do to, be, to enter, to have access to heaven? Jesus said, No problem. Keep the commandments, you know, don't steal, don't kill, that shall not murder, don't do this. And he mentioned to keep, uh, keep the um, things that needed to be done. And the man said, I have done everything. I have, done, I have been keeping the law. I have been keeping the law. I have kept all laws. And now, Jesus, if you note here, Jesus did not even mention one. One of Moses' law, the laws that Jesus was speaking about here, was the law that God wrote with his own hand on the mount. When, when uh, Moses went for 40 days and 40 nights, the one that God wrote with his own hand, that Moses brought down, saw the people who were offering sacrifice to an idol, he broke it and God said, come back for another 40 days. This time around, I'm not writing it again. It is you that will use your hand to write. I gave you a law, you went to break it because you are angry. No problem, use your own hand to write it again. So, Jesus was mentioning those laws. But this man came and said, I kept all laws, all laws, including the one of Moses. And a, a part of that law of Moses is the law of come and give God just 10%. The rest belongs to you. Jesus now looked at him and said, do you want to be perfect? Remember the last verse we read, he said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Jesus now looked at the man, do you really want to be perfect? If you want to be perfect... Sell all that you have, give it to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven. <laughs> that is Jesus' definition of perfection in finances. I am a bit afraid. And I'm beginning to ask myself, how many people in our generation... We get to the perfection that Jesus is talking about when we have refused to even teach ourselves the truth about how to handle our finances. We have copied the world. And the Bible says in the book of James that friendship with the world is an enemy of God. The world is a flashy world. The world wants to show off. The world wants to have and have and have. That is the world. But we now brought it into the church. And the best way we can have what we want is to teach a law that Christ did not teach. And neglect the exact teachings that Christ took his time to teach. Jesus was teaching about finances, 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 and check out all his teachings on finances. He never taught us to be giving him 10%. He was talking about, I own all of you, but I will take care of you. Don't be afraid. I will take care of you, but I'm the owner of all of you. Perfection is when you give me your all. That was all Jesus told us. Perfection is when you give me your all. Not when you give me a part. When you give me a part, that is not perfection. And you can't make it to heaven. You can't make it to heaven. The heaven is not meant for imperfect people. We have to keep walking and keep walking till we get to the place where we are perfect with God. Where we are perfect with Jesus. Then we have access to heaven. There is nothing that is so super on earth. Nothing. Quickly, I want you to... Let's pick the mind of Christ. And um, at this junction, please... I'm going to ask those on Zoom because of our basic plan. I'm going to end Zoom temporarily, then I will ask you to come back in. I will end Zoom meeting now, ask them to come back in so that um, it will not cut off while we are talking. Okay. Um, so others, please just bear with us, those of us on Zoom. Maybe very soon by the grace of God, we'll move to a higher plan that, can really, that we can really spend an, an hour and um, it will not cut off. So, uh, I'm just, just give me like, just give us a few minutes for those on Zoom to join us back, then we'll continue. Okay. Praise the Lord.
Now, I want us to pick the mind of God and let us see how God does his things. I want us to pick the mind of God and let us see a scenario about God because the Bible says God does not change. The Israelites were on a journey and God promised them, I am taking you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. What we expected is that God will also start, start feeding them with milk and honey on their way. You, okay, you promised us a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Vineyards that we did not plant. Wine press that we did not build. You promised us so much in that land. Oh, the grapes are big. Even when uh, Moses sent uh, Caleb and Joshua and the rest of them to go and quickly spy on the land, they came back and said, Hey, <laughs> if you see the fruit in that land, wow, it is massive. Ah, that land is wonderful. That place that God has promised us, it is wonderful. But can you note with me that on their way to the promised land, instead of feeding them with milk and honey, what was Christ giving them? Manna. And the reason why they call it manna is that they were saying, what is this? <laughs> what is this thing? And by the time the, the, the Israelites looked at their neighbors, and said, can't you see them eating meat? And we, we are here. We are eating what is this? Our neighbors are eating meat. We, we are eating what is this? Ah, that is, no manna. Manna means what is this? <laughs> they went to meet God and said, God, God, give us meat. Give us ravens. Give us meat. They murmured. We are not satisfied. You are not taking good care of us. It would have been better if you give us meat. Our neighbors are eating meat. And God said, oh, you want to eat meat? No problem. <laughs> I will give you meat. You will eat it. It will come out of your nose. <laughs> I will give you meat. You, you will be tired of the meat. And the meat will hurt you. Go and read the story very well. We still have souls that died. Because of meat. <laughs> what has happened? God has kept the church for so long in a quiet, gentle space. And sending our resources out into heaven. That, oh, I will keep them simple here. Because I am taking them to heaven. They are going to enjoy resources. They are going to enjoy my kingdom. I'm going to build massive things for them over there. I'm going to create things for them over there. Then the church went to God and said, can't you see the world? Can't you see how they are shining? We need money. We need money. Give us money. Give the church prosperity. We want to have money like them. We want to be great like them. And God said, oh, is that what you want? No problem. I will give you prosperity. And God gave the church prosperity. And the number one problem of the church today is the prosperity we have. And I hear of the elders of the church carrying gun to go and meet the general of to resign. I hear of giving them giving money to, to cook, to poison general overseers. Pastors fighting for positions. Pastors cannot even trust to eat in the house of a fellow pastor. They're afraid that they're going to be poisoned. Why? Because we have gotten what we, we went to cry for. Earthly kind of prosperity. The show-off kind of prosperity. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that is just to give us an insight into how God prospers his own. God is not a God of show off. Listen, when God was feeding the Israelites with manna, they did not grow feeble. They did not grow weak. For 40 years, they were roaming up and down, and none of them was feeble. It was God that was just killing them one by one. Their, their clothes did not wax old. Their garments did not tear. 
The same way the cloth was when they left Egypt is the same way the cloth was when they landed in the land they were going. It did not fade. It did not spoil. <laughs> that is God. That is the kind of prosperity that God gives. He will provide for you. He will take care of you. He will bring resources your way. But He wants to manage the resources for you so that you can have something in heaven. And the way we do it is we will ensure that He sends so much out of you here so that you can have something in heaven. There's another thing I want us to understand. There is this error, a grave mistake, of receiving your reward too early. Many of us are looking at some of our senior brothers in Christ who have made the mistake. Today, they are not yet dead, but they believe they have spent years working for God, so they are already receiving the reward. Ha! <laughs> you can't receive the reward here. You receive it here, it ends here. The day you die, the reward is ended. And the devil is helping them to spend their reward. Spend it seriously. So that they will not have anything over there. He gives them projects that are not supposed to be done. They buy hard sex they are not supposed to buy. In the name of God is rewarding me. But Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Who we claim is rewarding us is telling us here that lay not your treasures on earth. Why will he now give you the treasure on earth? Why will Christ who say don't keep it here now give you to keep it here? I want you to learn from that mistake. Myself, I'm learning from that mistake. We are not seeking the reward of our work here. Jesus didn't promise us a reward here. Where did he promise us a reward? In heaven. He says that anyone we receive on earth shall come together with persecution. He says, ah, no man will give to me that will not receive it here. And in the world to come, if you receive it here, it comes with persecution. If you transfer it over there, it comes with peace and joy as everlasting. So the kind of prosperity that Christ wants to give you is a prosperity that is simple on earth and shouting in heaven. I hope you got that. The kind of prosperity that God wants to give you is a prosperity that looks too simple on earth but very noise making in heaven. Listen, all this gra 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 that the world is doing, building themselves, this, buying that, uh, show, show off, it will end here. When they die and they are in hell, they will just like um, I la I, the story of uh, the rich man, the Lazarus, he was able to see the Lazarus where he was. Ah, oh, God, I'm waiting for those on Telegram. I'm waiting for those on Telegram. We seem to have a little issue. We're waiting for the network to be back. We're waiting for those on Telegram now to connect. Okay, I believe those on Telegram can hear me again now. Okay, so what we are saying is that all the gaga, the noise making of those of people on earth, all the noise they are making, all the show off, all the everything, where does it end? Here. By the time they die, they go into emptiness. So I, anyone that knows is not going to heaven, is planning to end it here, so please. Shop all the shop tables. And that's why Jesus said it will be difficult for a rich man to enter heaven. It's easier for the camel to pass the eye of a needle. Because the rich man enjoying that which has been given unto you. Praise the Lord. So Jesus has told us here. For your talent that he has given unto you. He's not seeking for a, 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 a part of it. So you can't go to church and just decide within yourself that, yes, today I want to give God a fat offering. Tomorrow I'm not feeling too good. No, everything belongs to Him. It is His money. <laughs> it is His money. The houses you have built, it is His house. The cars you have belong to Him. 
And the ones you don't have, you are lucky. Some of us, God has just uh, refused to open up the treasures and really pour it out for us. He's just giving you little by little. I want to say congratulations. Instead of you raising prayer points and saying, Father, don't you see me? Release more. Wouldn't you go to God and say, Father, <laughs> thank you for sending it over there for me. <laughs> thank you for managing it on my behalf. Thank you for not giving me much. And to whom much has been given? Ah, much is expected. You need to allow God to control it. So, tonight, God wants to give us access, not only to treasures on earth, but treasures in heaven. Treasures that are everlasting. Treasures that does not die. He wants to give you a transportation that does not break down. You don't have to service it. He wants to give you a house that you will never pay tax upon. He wants to give you prosperity that is beyond. He wants to make you rulers of cities. Praise the Lord. That is the prosperity that God wants to give you tonight. Uh, I want to apologize that this took our time. I didn't want to, it to go to day three again. <laughs> because if I cut it again, we'll have to go and continue tomorrow. I, I tried, let's finish it tonight. And let's just deal with this prosperity issue and move on to the other parts that God wants us to speak about. So, God wants to prosper you. I want you to know that a child of God will not lack. If you truly allow him to manage your finances, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. You have not tested it, that's why you don't know. <laughs> Test it. Test it. Surrender it all to him, and you'll surprise how he will handle your finances and prosper you in such a way that you will not lack here, yeah? and you will not lack when you die. That when you're about to die, you are smiling. Because you know I have so much investment in heaven. Oh, God has helped me to send my money there. My house has been sent there. God gave me a, 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 a seven-bedroom flat. And I've ensured that three bedrooms out of it, as three rooms out of it, has been out regularly. I just keep sowing it to heaven, sending it to heaven, sending it to heaven. God gave me a car. I keep packing and carrying people, old women, yeah, mothers with babies, little children. I keep giving them leaves as if I'm the ordinary driver. No, I am sending it to heaven. I'm sending my resources to heaven. I'm preparing my heaven immediately. Uh, God give me money. I'm not just taking 10% and giving it to him as if it's my minority shareholder and I'm the majority shareholder. I go to him. He decides what he wants. I give it to him. What am I doing? I'm sending my money. I'm sending my prosperity into heaven. He gave me clothes. Ah, I have worn them. They are no more my size. Instead of going to tell us to go and expand it again, that's why all the clothes I have, what do I do? I look for people around. I give it to them. What am I doing? I'm sending it to heaven. I'm sending it to my kingdom because I will have prosperity over there. That is what we are expected to, to do. Finally, do you know that Jesus now said, if you give to the poor, you are giving to me. So, and that was what he said in the, in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. That poor man was the access to Lazarus' kingdom in heaven. But he didn't know. He felt he was disgusted by the poor man that was standing at his gate. He was just disgusted. What is useless poor man? But that poor man was placed there as a access. Access. I know nowadays we are getting agitated to the extent that we are even creating priorities for the rich. We don't want the poor among us. <laughs> in, some, in some Christian settings, we are chasing away the poor. Our access to heaven, we are chasing it away. We hate to see them. We get annoyed when we see them. I'm afraid that even powerful, popular Nigerian teachers are now saying it is better to give to a prophet than to give to the poor. And I, I'm asking, where did you see that in the Bible? I thought Jesus said one of the easiest way to pass treasures across to him is to give to the poor. I have looked at the whole, whole of the Bible. When Jesus was talking, he kept talking about give to the poor, give to the poor. So when God will direct you to give, he will not direct you to go and give to where it will be wasted and used. 
to increase prosperity that we hand on earth. Rather, God will send you to where you will, in, in, you will put your resources, where it will be a gateway to heaven. And also, if somebody comes and says there will never be poverty again, and there will never be poor person again, everybody will be rich in Jesus' name. It's a lie. Jesus said that the way for some of us that he has given extra can send our resources to heaven is by giving to the poor in the land. And there is nobody that is poor that does not have someone that is poor. <laughs> so there is always a way to send. And that's how God takes care of his church. So he has not intended to us to, to take uh, 7 billion, 8 trillion, and be building auditoriums for him. No, he, he's not, he, he didn't tell us that building massive structures is the way to send money to, your, to heaven. He never said that. He kept talking about the poor. Of course, we'll build structures, we'll build simple structures, we'll build small, small things up and down that we can meet together and praise God, where we can sleep together, where we can have things in common. Yes, we'll do that. But the rest, we are supposed to send it into heaven, using the people they have placed around us. I pray that God will open your eyes to understand the import of this message. I know that this might be unpopular, but can we just follow the Bible? Because at the end of the day, the same Jesus, what he taught us, is what he will be waiting to test us for when we die. May we not fall short in this aspect of prosperity in Jesus' name. So I want you to go to God in prayers now. I don't know what aspect God has spoken to you about. In this whole discussion, I don't know which one he has spoken to you about. I don't know which one. I don't know which one. For the Holy Spirit prayer house, I know God is speaking to us decisively on the matter of we must ensure that we are a channel to the poor. We must ensure that we are a channel to the poor. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to my prayers too. So I don't know what, where he has, he has spoken to you, what he has spoken to you about. Can you quickly rush to God in prayers and begin to say to it now? Have you been the one in charge of your finances? You are the major shareholder. Jesus is the minority shareholder. <laughs> Can you correct that tonight? In prayers. In what aspect have you been doing? Are you the part of the people that hate to see the poor around you? It just, you know, it annoys you when you see them. So because of that, you have run away from the local parish near your house. You've gone to a big parish where the prosperous sit. Uh, hey, you feel at home. Ah, that might be a very dangerous thing. Can you set with we got tonight? Can you set with we got tonight? Have you been pursuing earthly prosperity the way the world pursues theirs? And missing in the heavenly prosperity that Christ has prepared for you? Ah, uh, can you sort it out tonight? There is no one who is empty up there that will get there. I don't think Jesus has planned to have houses for the homeless. So if you have nothing over there, then what are you doing there? We can't have vagabonds in heaven. In heaven, everybody is wealthy. It is on earth that we have the poor. In heaven, everybody is wealthy. So if you don't have anything there, there is no place for you. So prosperity is a key issue. How you manage your finances with Christ is a key issue. Can you discuss with God? Have you been blindly following people? God has never spoken to you where to put your resources. You've just been following people. Oh, because you have a card. They've given you a card now in church. So you are, you are just religiously paying that card so that when you now need loan in church, they will now call you and give you loan. That one, you are not sending money to heaven, no? <laughs> you are investing on earth. Can you correct it to God now? Correct it with God. Just correct it with God. Set it with God tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We might be spending quite a time tomorrow in prayers over this matter. We might spend quite a time tomorrow in prayer over this matter. This is a very important matter. Very important matter. If you miss it, it might lead to missing heaven. So, uh, I, I, can I pray with you tonight? Can we just pray tonight together and um, tomorrow we continue our prayers? Let's pray. Father, we want to bless you for your word coming to us tonight. 
We are sorry that we have been treating the issue of prosperity the wrong way. We have been dealing with it the way the world deals with it, and not the way Jesus dealt with it when he was on earth. We have been confused by worldly ways rather than the God way. Please have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Father, we are not seeking for earthly prosperity that hangs on earth. We are seeking for a prosperity that is everlasting. An infinitum prosperity. That's what we are seeking for. Father, lead us to it in Jesus' name. Help us to attain that level of prosperity as you will desire us to have in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we come to you. There is no one that serves you that lacks. There is no one that serves you that will have poverty. Resources will naturally come our way. The resources designed for your own. Let it locate us tonight in Jesus' name. Is there anywhere we are lacking? It's grant us the faith to receive it in Jesus' name. And are there things you have refused to give us because you don't want us to have it? Please grant us contentment with godliness so that we can be content in you not giving us in Jesus' name. Heaven is our goal. Help us to make it to heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. I want to seriously apologize for taking so much of our time. We just had to listen to the word tonight so that we can go into prayers tomorrow and action point on what God wants us to do. I pray that mercy that has located you for everlasting prosperity, we grant you the grace to access it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful night in the presence of God.